And can you hear your? All right. Can you hear yourself here? Bring the microphone. Um, you can slide it yeah, all the way over I, to yeah, you. Yeah, I can hear myself. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you too. All right. Are we uh, recording now? We are recording. It's official. Hello, world. Yeah, we. Act, yeah, I, I like to. I like to not have any like. Just like, you know, hello, profundities, weird. just like, you know, like I've been listening, you, have, have you listened to Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend? Uh, once it's, or twice, yeah. It's interesting, yeah. you know, but it's also There's very like, formal yeah, like, and, like, and I'm, we're going to play or, this, this no. same theme song sure. again. There's clearly like a laid out agenda before this. There's time, a laid out agenda, you know? it's very NPR. So yeah, so public very... service announcement, there is absolutely no agenda here. No. <laughs> That would that would take professionalism and uh, uh, preparation. No, I and think I it have would take away from like the value of what you're providing. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I mean, you hear you that, know, boys and girls? I have value. If if, you, if if I had been given like, hey, these are the things we're going to talk about, then I would have sat there and like prepped my answers or thoughts and responses, and right. you know, instead it's just like, let's just roll with it, man. Right. There's only been a couple episodes where I've genuinely had like a difficult time. Um, like getting through, I think one of them was the the Lily episode. I, I I like I liked our episode. It was a lot of fun, but because I wasn't cussing, it was really difficult to, for me to not just mm. fuck yeah. for me to just not. You know what I mean? Because I'm I'm not a I'm not a polished boy. You, don't, you know what I mean? You know? I'm, I'm a, I like to not polish. You know, censorship, right? I mean, even if you're not like being forced, if you feel like you can or can't say certain things, it's just going to change your whole dialogue because you're right. pre-thinking everything you say instead of just kind of instinctively responding. Which was nice about also speaking of Conan O'Brien needs a friend. He actually says "fuck" on it from time to time, yeah. which is nice. Yeah. I've always I liked. To, did you ever see uh, his that that movie he did the the documentary that Conan O'Brien can't stop? No. Someone did a documentary of uh, following him around. Uh, for the tour he did when he wasn't allowed to be on TV. Yeah. Um, and it was a fucking, yeah, it's a really good it's a really Well, good yeah. Movie. I mean, like, was that before he got, like, the two-day gig as the new Tonight Show person and it flopped completely? It was right afterwards. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't all the flop, though. Hang on, goddammit. I'm going to stick up for my coke. I, look, But I, he said he had an issue with Mr. Jay Leno. I'm not blaming it all on that. I don't know the facts. I'm not going to pretend I do. So well, please educate that me. would be fixed if... We weren't doing this, and you know what? We're gonna take a break, and we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna watch the movie, and we're gonna start recording again in two hours and thirty minutes. Right. Um, today on episode thirty-four, wow, episode thirty-four of Conservative is Alex. Thank you so fucking much for coming in, Alex. Yeah, I really. Dude, this is great. It. This is this is perfect. So you know, it's funny. I uh, uh, for those who don't know me, which is probably the majority of anybody who listens to this, I, I I'm not from nor do I live in the Bay Area. I'm just out here for work for the week. I did live here a few years ago and mm-hmm. knew Pete quite well then. And I wrote Pete a somewhat tongue-in-cheek comment on Facebook a little while ago. And I said sure. something like, you should bring me on, like bring on like the Southern slash Midwestern libertarian to talk. And you said, I don't give those people a platform. And I was right. like, fuck that motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> but you know I was kidding. <laughs> no, of course. Okay, all right. Of course, I just thought it was hilarious. I just love then... you. I like using the, the term platform the way <laughs> that uh, people who think they're not problematic. I only hang out with problematic motherfuckers. I mean, let's be fucking real. Do you really want someone to like follow you around with like a little? It's like it's like I'm being walked like a dog. You know what I mean? Like if you walk your dog, you have to have a do- you have to have a bag in hand ready so that you can pick up their feces. You're watching for it. You might dick around on your phone for a second, but then you oh okay, and then you can no 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 neighbor. don't eat that no no like I don't need anybody to police my behavior or my language or I don't need anybody to say you're problematic. Go fuck yourself. I hang out with problematic motherfuckers. Yeah, it was I'm the only an fun people. that doesn't walk my dog with the bag, and so when he shits on your yard, it's it's you know you're picking it up. I'm not. Fuck. You not in real life. Don't I be one of the, God, you're, that's a true story. You're a horrible person. You have to pick up your dog's shit. No, no. What a horrible person you are. It's it's You're responsible for that fucking thing. Just okay, SJWs are not responsible for us. We are responsible for the goddamn for our okay. lower our if lower it's, powers. If it's my neighbor's <laughs> yard, I'm going to pick it up. But admittedly, only because I'll have to deal with that motherfucker <sighs> at some point. If I'm in a public park, <sighs> I'm, you know, hey. You may be the devil. I, I, I'm just letting you know. I, I would this is not what, argue with you. This is what I get for bringing in on a, liber, a libertarian. <laughs> How was your donut? It was excellent. Boston cream. Boston creams favorite. are good, man. Yeah, man. Safeway's not bad, man. Uh, Safeway select donuts, they do in a pinch, you know what I mean? They, they're not like Krispy Kremes, but... Sure. Uh, no, but for, you know, store-bought whatever bakery, that's, that's legit. I mean, if you told me that was from Dunkin' Donuts, I would have believed you. 
Yeah, I don't think I've had a Dunkin' Donuts in a while. Anyway. Oh, oh where, where, where are you from? Where you live? Oh, God, I'm from all over. So uh, I live in Louisville, Kentucky. Right. Um, it's actually my hometown. Although Do they have Dunkin' in. there or no? Yeah, but mostly Starbucks. So, but okay. there is some Dunkin' around. But I've lived in Boston for a number of years. So Interesting. That's all that there is. I mean, Dunkin' is life in right, Boston, right, 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 Massachusetts. Right, right. I lived in Boston. I went to high school in Boston. I went back to Boston after grad school and worked there for... Uh, about four years, um, so I've lived about six years of my life in the city of Boston, and then mm. spent my summers in Massachusetts with my family growing up. But I've also lived in Nashville, Tennessee, for eight years. I went to college and grad school in Nashville. Okay, and I lived uh, here in the Bay Area for a couple of years, as you know. Right, and um, made my way back home to Louisville, uh, where my some of my family still is. So my mother and stepfather, and my sister, brother-in-law, and their two little boys are there. But my brothers are both up in the Northeast, um, so there's four of us, and uh, I am the one that made my way back. I guess it's been, shit, it's been three years now. I made my way back. For Thanksgiving of 2015, I drove home in a U-Haul and never left. It's Interesting. Been, it's been awesome, man. I, I love being home. You know, I always, I think I think there's a lot of misconception here, of... Here, put, put the mic... Uh, uh, no, you can, too far away? No, you just move around a lot. <laughs> you just, like, look at all over the place, like uh, we're fucking... Yeah. But, all right, perfect. There Continue. we go. There's a misconception. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's that sweet, that sweet honey. Yeah. <laughs> no, there, I think there's, there's definitely a misconception about um, just when you say the word Kentucky. Um, right, absolutely. You know, and especially having lived in some, you know, major... And, and extremely liberal areas, Boston, San Francisco, and even mm. to a lesser degree, Nashville. Mm. Uh, while it's in Tennessee, and you think red state, super conservative, Nashville sure. is by far um, uh, on the extreme edge of, of what you would envision when you think of a state like Tennessee. And sure. Louisville's the same way. Um, I think Hillary won my county, you know, Jefferson County, Kentucky, by like... Fifteen hmm. percent, which is more than yeah, like San big. Bernardino County, you know. Right, right, so right. Um, I'm still an outlier, even in my hometown, even though it's you know super red Kentucky, and, right. and Kentucky's red. Don't get me wrong. Sure, but but Louisville's a very uh, uh, kind of so like so it sticks out like a sore thumb. They hate so each other. like the city of Louisville hates the state of Kentucky, and the state of Kentucky hates the city of Louisville. Okay, uh, there's like, like a lot of political disconnect, and like you know. We don't want you here. We don't want to be part of you. Like, like you can drive your Prius to the lynching. Like, is that what? <laughs> That's spot on. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Yeah. And you don't have to go far. I mean, it, you know, we're talking 30, 45 minutes. And That's you're how there. Portland is. Did you ever go to Portland? Only like Portland proper. I've never been outside. So of you go to Gresham, mm -hmm. like fucking five minutes east, and you're just immediately people reading guns magazines. And it's just, it's not bad, bad. It's not like, sure, you know, yeah, ding, 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 yeah. it's not delivering, but it is. A deliverance, but it is it is definitely like immediately you can tell oh something is something shifted because all of the people who are uh, I think here's what I think it is part of it anyway is that the people who are super liberal intentionally homogenize themselves I don't know if you can use homogen homogenized no, in a sense. verb like yeah. that but it's like oh, I only want the people around me I only want to see what I want to see I don't want to meet like like what was the experience you were just talking about before we before we started you were talking about Which how one? how there are people you know who you're the only conservative that they know yeah sure yeah, so Pete and I were just talking about this as we were kind of getting ready to start get started, and uh, you know, uh, he was just kind of making sure there weren't any things that didn't want to be discussed or so forth that I just didn't want to bring up. And first of all, I said, you know, I'm basically fair game; we can talk about whatever. But right. um, you know, one of the things that I was joking about that a person on a podcast like this might be kind of, I don't know, careful about is you know, well. You know, if I get into some sort of public position, like this mm -hmm. could come back to haunt me, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I personally, me, Alex, do not have political aspirations, but I get comments from a number of my friends, all of whom are left leaning, if not strongly left leaning, who say, you know, you should run for office. And, you know, we were joking about it, Pete and I, because, you know, the, the, the silliness of that and, and kind of the frustrating part is it's because they know me and they know that I'm not a piece of shit. Right. 
And despite my conservative views, they know that I'm a good human being that right. actually like cares about other human beings. I like that. I like that. Okay. <laughs> I like so, that the word despite is in there. Yeah. I know no. you, I know you have to for this, exactly. for this frame of this conversation, but it is very, dis- it's disturbing. Right. <laughs> and, and like, you know, as, as though they, they, they think that I am the exception to the conservative world and that all other conservatives and that are liberal, actually And that liberal morals have a corner on the market of morality. No, That's what it is. Oh my God. It, 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 that is the most frustrating thing about today's political discourse that just sends me over the edge in any dialogue I have, whether it's in person or some sort of Facebook stupid debate, which I hate, but I'm always t- partaking in. Sure. Um, you know, it's it's the moral high ground that the left seems to honestly believe that they have mm-hmm. over the right. right. Uh, I, I mean, I honestly hear consistently that, you know, it is the GOP or the right-leaning people that are absolutely at the very least amoral but mostly immoral right meaning right. the difference being either don't have morals or have bad morals right. and uh whereas almost like they're fat cats some some in some it's like that there, there there's fat white board of directors somewhere that's just laughing at these poor brown people who are covered in mud at the border you know what i mean like that's that's the only option here you know what i mean <laughs> okay so it's it's, <laughs> it's so spot on and like I actually read a really, really interesting article. I wish I, I we can take a break at some point and I can look it up if, if listeners yeah, want to check it out. Yeah, I mean, if you out, want to Google it, but I'll, I'll find what, is it. It, what is it? But basically, it's it's <clears throat> a study uh, by uh, some philosophers and sociologists about the morals of politics. Right. And basically, there are, uh, I think there are five, what they call moral foundations, right? So there are five factors that make up a person's morals. <laughs> and I have none of them. <laughs> And this is like a, a real study, and this isn't some sort of like right protective, you know, argument. It's just it's just a matter of like studying people's views and facts, and then correlating them to their political stance versus their their moral stances, right? So there sure. are there are five things that make up one's morals. You know, those things are defined as um, basically like care. So you know. Okay. Do I do I care for my fellow man? So not passion; it's more care for a, a, another. And I think there's some interpretation of each of these sure, words. So sure. I mean, they, you could go into them and, and talk about what they all mean. Right, right. right. Uh, but just in terms of the, the nomenclature used for each, there's care, there's fairness, which is like the big argument that I think mm-hmm. you get from the left, right? Mm-hmm. You know, it's not fair that the mm-hmm. top one percent are the top one percent. Mm-hmm. It should be equally distributed. That right. is fair. Right. And there's a difference in view of what's fair and what's not, and that's a, that's right. an issue there. But then there's also uh, what is called loyalty or in-group, and that is basically where patriotism comes from. Sure. You know, it's the idea that I am, as a conservative, I, it's viewed as a wrong view by the left, but I, I am more apt to want to protect my own, my, you know, my in-group, my fellow Americans. Sure. And that's where the issue of, like, border security comes in. But it's also, it goes even more narrow. I mean, it could be, you know... But I mean, I, it can start with like I'm I'm more likely to you know I don't know really focus on protecting and caring about the people that I know personally and sure, care about right um, and, and and that includes Second Amendment stuff where you want to protect no your family shit. Right? no shit exactly and then and then there's also the issue of authority um, mm. you know which is basically just simply like respect for authority respect for the police respect for the fire departments respect for the people that protect your ability to right you know keep the in group safe right and then the last one is purity which i think a lot of people twist into like uh Racial. religious purity sure, sure sure um you know the issue of you know oh you know crazy religious people right wingers think that um you know and, and and that can be included but it goes beyond that but it's basically the issue of like there are things that i view as impure so to speak and i don't even like the word purity and for, yeah. for this definition but it's sure. just the word that's been given but anyway those are the five things that make up morals and those are like unanimously defined by philosophers to be the context of what morality is. Right. And if you study, and I haven't studied this, but if you read this study, basically conservatives almost equally weight all five of those things as important to their morals. Mm. Whereas the left-leaning, more quote-unquote liberal, although I would say liberal isn't even the right term for those people anymore. Right. It's more right. progressive, right? right? right. Uh, only care about the first two I mentioned. It's, mm. it's the care and the fairness. And if you don't focus solely on those two things and you actually equally or increase the weight on purity, authority, and loyalty, 
then you're somehow immoral or amoral. And that's where I think the breakdown is. It's not an issue of good versus bad. It's an issue of we define our morals differently. And just because I am viewing things in a certain way, I'm viewed by so many people as immoral. And it freaking pisses me off. And, you know, for whatever reason, and I don't know what it is, and I'd, I'd love to kind of explore this at some point, it doesn't go the other way. I don't hear conservatives saying you, you progressive, are an immoral, awful person. You know, you see these interviews. I see, I see it sometimes. One of the things that I was thinking about, you said uh, you were listening because here's what, where I'm coming from. I'm not coming from a place where – or I think that one, the, the real issue that – like if you want to actually talk about like what the actual issues are, which they don't. But I think if you really were to talk about it – it's not it's not that we disagree on the issue itself but how to deal with the issue on a lot of cases one of those is border security or gun security or like as an example where if if you're not for taking away all of our guns then you autom- then you hate children mm-hmm. and you want them to die mm-hmm. it's like no 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 i i do see that there these mass shootings are a fucking problem but we have different definitions on how to take care of that problem you say get rid of all guns and that, or or get rid of these type of style guns, and that'll do it. And then other people are saying, no, 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 it needs to this. Like we just have different definitions of how to deal with the issue. But once we make it into a morality thing, then you're fucked. That's number one. And number two, I was thinking as far as the loyalty in group thing, that's actually going to fair fairness as well. I think the left does probably have a lot of loyalty thing, but only when it comes to their side like 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 we all are apt to do as humans sure. we have our team right but i think when it when it's like oh loyalty to um like if you're a feminist and you're marching in a thing you know holding it i talk about this bullshit all the time the uh, the fuck white feminism sign remember that mm-hmm. where it's like mm-hmm. oh yeah screw fight fuck white feminism a bunch of but, white chicks yeah. carrying a sign that says fuck whites yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> we, we gotta close the door because we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna piss off these fucking startups um but I, I, I they're, uh, they're, you know what I'm saying? Where like loyalty also is a factor in there, I think. Uh, no, I, and I agree. And, and you know, I mean, it's a very subjective issue. Each of these is. I mean, no one person like is going to align perfectly with the way this, you know, it's, it's, it's a law of averages situation, right? You know, when you poll a million people or I mean, that's way too many, but let's say they polled 2000 people and took a pulse on their political stance, their voting history. And then compared that to how they, you know, probably took a quick survey that said, you know, how important are each of these things and what you view as moral. And so, you know, it was just an interesting study where I'm sure there are conservatives who only focused on the first two like the liberals do. And there were liberals who focused on the others and and, and vice versa. But on the average, that's the way it, it, it pans out. And it makes sense when you think about it. And forget the details of which each one weighs and focuses on. It's the issue of that because there are differences in the view of morality. Right. One then thinks that the other is bad or wrong or evil because right. their morals don't align with, with, with mine. Right? And the end game of that is the most dangerous. That's why we can't play that game. That's because why you the can't have conversations game, with anybody. Well, yeah, but the end game is we will, we need to exterminate those people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yeah, the bring end game on is... the war. Bring on the war. <laughs> Do you know how fucking quickly that would be over? You know, the last time the Democrats tried to start a war, that was called the Civil War. The Democrats were the oh, Confederates, shit. and they didn't do so well. That's true. You're right. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. I don't. I, I mean, because I'm a dumb boy. Um, what is this? What, so the Confederates were the Democrats. What was the definition of democracy of Democrat at that point? They, they obviously they maybe wouldn't be interested in social justice, but they would be more interested in spread the wealth of the round. Is it like socialist leaning type of thing? I mean, not exactly in the exact word because I mean, Marx wasn't around. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. It wasn't. Like, so, I mean, it was. I it was more. Uh, I mean, the issue of conservative versus liberal, uh, historically and traditionally, has always been a ma- at its fundamental level. It's about big or small government. That's the right, difference between right, conservative right, 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 and liberal. Right, right. And conservatives are wanting to focus on the States. constitution. Right state rights, right. reduce the federal government, reduce the power of the government, give right. the power back to the people. Right. And Democrats typically are looking to do things that more increase the power and stance of the government. And it doesn't mean we want the government to be fascist overruling. Sure. But it can be things like we want the government to manage our health care. Right. We want the government to increase social welfare programs and take care of our poor. 
Right. Right. Conservatives are more, we want people to care for each other and care for ourselves. Right. Um, and, and that's where the, the fundamental difference always originates. And both and both can be manipulated and used for poor, for bad shit. Like, both can be. Absolutely. You know what I mean? There which are is why, some which evil is why... fucking conservatives out there, and I'll be the first to say it. I <laughs> which, mean... is, which is why this middle, which I really believe, I don't even think it's like, because I want to say like, oh, it's growing. There's a number of us who are... To, no, I think it's always kind of been there. I think these fringe places, are, like, they may they may snipe off some, but they're not they're not growing. Like, the, the, I don't think I so. I mean, they're, anyway. you know, you're right. When and you get us alone, everybody who have gotten on the podcast has been like semi, mostly reasonable motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Like, there's been some, there's been some very hard right leaning people, and there's been some left leaning people, and most of us have been sure. You know, I mean, if 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 you polled the average person who's read my Facebook news feed or even just had a general conversation with me that's with me that's political in nature, like, yeah, they would pretty quickly admit or agree that i am conservative Mm -hmm. so you know then the question becomes why do you label yourself libertarian right right and the difference is number one i have a lot of strong disagreements with the things that the republican party stands for so what what, what's one of those uh i'm pro-life or excuse me (laughs) i'm (laughs) pro-choice okay Um, now i'm pro-choice i am uh I don't know. I can I can name a few. I'm I'm in full support of gay rights and equal rights to homosexuals, marriage, adoption. Okay, you name it. Um, okay. just to name a few that kind of stick out, right? That you wouldn't sure. necessarily think of when you just label what is a conservative's views, right? right? So those are two that are just very quick to point out. Right. But really, ultimately, what it comes down to, and why I call myself a libertarian, is because I want the federal government to get the fuck out of my life. Right. right that right, is right, right. that is where my 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 libertarian views really kind of center is and not just my life your life and everybody else's life the federal government is bad at what it does and everything that it does yes. we know that in every single thing that they've yes. ever tried to run or control or right. uh i mean shit they can't even you know have a I mean, it's it's comical i love, how, I love the example i love that you, have you ever heard of uh the economist uh Yoren brooks mm-hmm so where he talks about, have you ever gone to the DMV? And he has this shitty, the way he talks is really awful. I love him, but everything. But anyway, he talks about the DMV and he talks about how awful the DMV is just on a, on a bureaucratic level, how every lines out the ass and just five people who hate their jobs and hate these people who are standing in front of them waiting forever. I went to the Sacramento DMV. Never go to the Sacramento DMV. It just sounds awful. Um, it's a, the, literally the epicenter of hell. And I, and I, and, uh, and and he said, imagine that, imagine that uh, government body creating this. And he held up his cell phone. You know what I mean? Like, no, Ingenuity, Apple, a company yes, yes. made this cell phone. And they did it amazingly. Can you imagine a cell phone created by the DMV? I mean, the, the, <laughs> I mean, it would be a shit show. And, and there are slow... examples of where the government has proven its ineptitude right. in very real ways. Right. Uh, you know, we talk about government control of health care. It exists. It's called the VA, and it is a disaster. Yeah, it's true. Talk to any nurse, doctor, friend of yours about right. what it's like to either, you know, rotate through the VA or do some sort of training in the VA. It's it's like where doctors and nurses go to die. Like if you're the worst of the worst in wow. your class, you end up in the VA. Interesting. And now more power and respect to those who are taking care of our veterans. That's not what I'm trying to get at. Right. But it's just because it is so poorly managed and run and the operations are such a disaster uh how can you want all of our health care to be replicated by what we see in just one small sample they can't mm-hmm. even get that right and it's just it's a it's right. a much smaller scale so you know to think that the government would somehow miraculously be able to turn that operation around and you know turn into a kaiser permanente is a fucking insane thought and it's 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 where liberals and progressives tend to live is in this ideal kind of you know rainbows and and unicorns world where everything is going to be perfect and the government's going to take care of us and and everybody's going to love and hug each other and all we need is love man that (laughs) sounds great i love everybody but maybe maybe i'm pessimistic i consider myself realistic i'm sorry by the way by the way fuck john lennon i'm I'm gonna say it right fucking now this may be one of the opinions that that makes you mad stop listening to my fucking podcast fuck john lennon in his face first things first all you need is love that motherfucker was abusive (laughs) not just to his first wife but to his son he was emotionally stunted he was childish and he had no idea what he was talking about and 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 plus really let's be fucking real uh what's that one I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round. That and Imagine are the exact same fucking song. And not just that. What are the words to imagine? Imagine all the people 
we'll we'll live in peace. If you boil, imagine down to a down to a uh, let's let's get it right down to the root. The root is everyone will be fine if you believe the same things that I do. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. If we had no God, if we had no money, well, wait, what about the people who want God? No, 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 no. They don't have it fucking right. Well, we won't be at peace until you believe like John Lennon. That's not something to shoot for. That's not an ideal. That's not a fucking ideal. You know what I mean? Like, all you need is not fucking love. And the cocksucker could not write as good as Paul McCartney. Fuck John Lennon. I was just gonna say, Paul McCartney made the Beatles not Lennon. Thank you. Um, (laughs) And, but I will also say, in John Lennon's defense, Yoko destroyed the Beatles, not John, so. So. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> maybe it was his. Maybe it was his English guilt that made him go. <laughs> I could have any woman in the world. I'm gonna get this <laughs> this pan face broad, <laughs> unattractive. <laughs> Never mind. I'll hold my tongue. Pan faced. <laughs> <laughs> I love Bobby Lee with all my heart. Anyway, so I was wondering where does where do you feel personally is the line? So say you want you want more states rights, and I'm down with that. But where? Because I'm, I'm for gay rights as well. Some of the fight, the last maybe 2008 or whenever it was, or at least the last, maybe let's say, uh, maybe not, let's not go that far back. I think part of, the, part of the fight on the, if you can call it the Republican side, of not being all down with quote unquote gay rights is more being a states rights thing. You know what I mean? They don't want the federal government telling a cake shop to make the fucking cake. Exactly you know what I mean? right. That's and that's very libertarian in nature too. Right. Right. It's very much let me be what I want to be, do what I want to do, and get the fuck out of my life. Right. right. You're there to you know I, I mean defend right. and protect the Constitution of the make, United States. That is your sole job. Right? right. You're not supposed to be you know dictating what it is I can and can't do religiously or otherwise. And you know that issue if you want to like touch on the 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 cake making issue you know i am one who sides with the cake maker even though i am pro gay rights right and that might sound contradictory on on the surface it is not not at all right no uh because i'm also pro freedom of religion right and just because that man's i think it was a guy the baker because that man's religion happens to tell him and he believes with the bottom of his heart that his religion is the truth that is what he needs to live by and I might disagree with his religious beliefs, but that's not my, I mean, I, it's not my decision to say what he should or shouldn't believe. And so because he has religious beliefs and he must live by them, he must also carry that into his business. Right. And unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, you know, it, it offended this, this, this gay couple. And what I like, it to- wasn't a matter of like, I don't want to serve you because you disgust me. It was, I can't in my good conscience because of my religious beliefs provide this service to you and now all of a sudden the government is coming in and basically stepping in where there's supposed to be separation of church and state and saying no that's not fair you have to do that i mean look i can understand arguments on both sides i can but i also fundamentally and at its core think that the bigger issue here is the government overstepping its bounds and right. you know and, uh, and, when it's dictating what we as a private business owner can and can't do right that's just beyond i mean it's just it's I, just unacceptable did you see the steven crowder uh video that he made right afterwards um uh right after that kind of ballyhoo uh to use a, a very adult term <laughs> uh started uh, he made this video where he went to a cake shops uh that were owned by muslims and tried to have them uh, make gay cakes, and they wouldn't. And well, they like no, but they looked at him like weird. And so that's what I really criticize think. a brown exactly. person. Thank you very much. And so <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you sat. Yeah, this is what I'm saying. This is one of my one of my big things as a semi as a semi brown person. That's the thing I think really the left that the left leaning like you need to make it cake. What it really is is a self hate. What it really is is this these white kids who just don't want to be. They just don't a white person and their white Christianity. That's what the problem is. No 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 no. Brown people have weird religious views too. <laughs> and no not to, shit. And I mean, um. And uh, and they and they say nothing about it. And I don't know. I don't. I don't understand why you can't just like why that's never talked about, except for on these like right leaning. Like no one's ever like brought it up to. Some, well, some... I mean, you know, uh, sh- I, I don't know if they're nearly as like protected of a class as uh, as you know Latinos or African Americans or Muslims mm-hmm. for that matter, mm-hmm. or the homosexual or the transgender, but. You know, another example is 
the Asian population, right? Mm-hmm. You know, we hear so much shit about white privilege. Right. I am your definitive white privileged male, right? right? I come from a family of wealth and status. I went to private universities and got a really good education. Mm-hmm. Um, I am white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, okay. and I am like the antithesis of what the left supports and believes and wants to succeed in this world, right? right. I'm supposed to give all that power to others. And the only reason I've achieved anything that I've achieved in life is because of my white privilege. That's what I'm told, and that's what I'm supposed right, to believe. Right, 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 right. And look, I'm not denying that I, I had privileges growing up. I absolutely did. Sure. I don't think they came necessarily from my white skin, right. but I did have privileges growing up. Right. Uh, now, if you look at broader statistics, you know we hear all about, oh, the white man gets all the benefits, and that's why the white man has higher income and wealth than every other... Mm-hmm. No, that's not true. It's right. the Asian population <laughs> that has the highest average yeah. income in the United Indians, States. Indians I don't and hear Asians a lot of people talking about our fucking Asian asses. privilege in the United States. I'd love to see those articles coming out from the New York Times and the freaking whatever else, the San Francisco Chronicle. I mean... You know, those damn Asians, you know, with that Asian privilege, you know, they shouldn't be making so much money here in the United States, you know. <laughs> and then I don't know if there's just some sort of kind of get out of jail free card where it's like, no, they earn that on their own accord. And they've right. done that through, you know, hard work and, and, and right. you know, commitment. And sure, there are piece of shit white people that are just absolutely old money wealth that don't do shit, don't have drive and motivation and live off of their trust funds. I don't have any respect for those people. I never right. will. Right. You know, and, uh, you know, I have friends who were able, if they wanted, right. to live that lifestyle. Right. And all of them, or at least those who I call a friend, have, <laughs> you know, paved their own path and, and right. done what they need to do to succeed and, in their own done, life. And done things with that with that privilege or with that money for others Sure, as and many well. of them, oh my God, are left-leaning and they're on right. your side, but they're still your enemy, right? So right. it's just, it's right. kind of counterintuitive if you right. ask me. The other thing is, too, I think it comes from a base of childishness. Uh, and I think the because I, I always take it back to like this is this is a lot of the left leaning people. They want even Stevens. They want even Stevens and not actually black people like some black people. Sure. But really, it's just loud white kids who want um, who want even Stevens. Now, here's what even Stevens is. I work at a restaurant, and there's a lot of uh, 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 Mexican workers at my restaurant. If if we followed the Even Stevens line, like like they watch a lot of Telemundo, and mm-hmm. I don't see enough black people on Telemundo, and no one on the left is saying anything about that. <laughs> so what we need to do, because because we need to be Even Stevens, yeah. and not just that. I've t- said this before. If black people are fourteen percent. 14% of our America. Where does the even Stevens lie if there's not enough? Should we make sure that there's only 14% of black people, right? Sure. Or only sure. 50% of white people? And it's all even Stevens. I want it even Stevens. Or even Stevens could also be, um, well, white people have had it really good. Okay, now we're going to make sure white people are down. Okay, what's the end game? Well, we need to bring up all these poor these poor underprivileged people and bring it, okay, for how long? Should it be for 100 years? Should it be for 400 years? Well, no, no, we need to make it even Stevens. So uh, we need to make white people slave like this is really the the stupidity like if you let this fucking end game <laughs> follow through like just stop just fucking stop it needs to end at some point there it, needs to be some sort of maturity happening. no it, it goes back it goes back to i think the point that i was making at the beginning of of our talk here which is that kind of care and fairness morality right, right. The, the 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 leftist view is uh what you, what you don't have, we will give to you, or someone will give to you, right? The conservative view is what I don't right. have, I will I will earn. I will right. I will find a way to earn it and make it. And right. I don't understand how I am viewed as the bigoted racist because I disagree with the scope and breadth of our social welfare programs, right? Okay. I believe that they. I don't believe they need to be removed See, and cut. Right. No. But, no. No. I think what you just said, because you're a problematic, evil white man, is that you don't want any black people on welfare. I thought that's what you just said. Didn't right. I know what right. You just I said? mean, okay. that's essentially what I'm saying. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but that's exactly what people will fucking hear when I try to make my like fact-based <laughs> economic arguments that are actually boo, steeped facts, in boo. that are steeped in like legitimate caring and 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 desire for pe- the betterment of people, all people. Right. Regardless of race, because right? if you make the country better, well, then the the people no, inside like said go, country will so like be the, the better. Even Stevens that you're talking about, it goes back like the the prime example is obviously affirmative action, right? Right, and is you don't mind that if I eat my shitty salad? No, maybe. go for it. 
Go for it. Thank you. Mm-hmm. This is the this is the most complicated thing Chipotle. I've ever eaten. Mm-hmm. Did you did you uh did you bring a change of underwear after that? <laughs> I don't have I don't know why everyone's just rocketing out of their anus when they eat Chipotle. <laughs> I don't have that experience. I don't know. Oh man. But uh no, so the even Stevens thing, like affirmative action, right? Like at its core, I think it is well meaning. Absolutely well meaning. Mm-hmm. Of course, like the, the the design and the purpose of the program is to help make up for past transgressions that certain races have had to endure. And we both agree. I mean, I agree anyway. I think that they actually did. There were a lot of motherfuckers who wouldn't hire black people for a long time. Or let black people into... Oh, absolutely. Oh, there's so much, like, shit that I wish we could undo, but we can't. Right. And so by trying to undo it in the present, it doesn't really (laughs) work the way that people are designing it to work, right? right? And so... When my stance is affirmative action isn't working because it's actually ignore like the no the, the 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 cream of the crop should get you know the best job and the best education and they should get accepted like I get it like there are um, you know systemic problems where inner city children aren't getting the proper education that other kids might be able to get and therefore don't have the opportunity and so they need to be given a leg up like that's where affirmative action comes from mm-hmm. uh, and, and I get the reasoning behind it. But it's a certain point, and I don't know where the appropriate balance is. I'm not trying to say that I come up with all the answers. But at a certain point, you have to say, no, wait a second. In itself, that's kind of racist. Right. We're saying that you can't earn those things on your own, and we have to give you like an extra nudge because we don't think you're qualified or capable to actually achieve that on your own merit. Right. Right? And and uh, affirmative action is one example, but it's, it's you know, uh, it comes down to uh, like the... the um, Ari, uh, I think his name's Ari, the, the video that you talked about with, with Mike the Southerner, um, where he's asking a bunch of white liberal college kids why, oh, right, 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 about right. voter suppression. Right, 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 right. right? right. It's voter like ID it's, laws. It's, it's, it's a similar issue where mm-hmm. like there's just this idea that like they can't care for themselves, they can't do what's needed, so we, the, the, the privileged white person, need to give them everything that they don't have. And that's that's such a fucked up way of trying to help somebody right you know is uh, to keep them keep them as your pet <laughs> that's all the welfare state does it's all it does a great it's example exactly of this. what the welfare state is designed to do you keep you get somebody right like completely dependent on you and therefore you, you they're gonna vote for you forever because if i right. don't vote for you you're gonna take away my welfare you're gonna take away my my social programs right and i and i think that i mean in in that because i've i've heard that and i know I don't know if I attach as much malice to it, to the intention of the left-leaning Democrats. Maybe the maybe the politicians, but I don't think like some purple-haired broad is going to like start yelling about it. You know. Oh, by the way, I did get a message from a purple-haired. I was yelling about fat purple-haired broads, and this girl was like, "Who's actually? She's pretty cool. She she's purple-haired, and you know, she's she's thick. I'm not saying she, you know, but she's like, what's wrong with fat purple-haired broads? <laughs> I love you, baby. Don't 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 worry about it. No, that's just me ranting. But anyway, let me let me. Let me I was thinking a great example of this affirmative action shit not working out, in my opinion, is Native Americans. Um, we both the left and the right agree Native Americans are not doing great right now, right? Mm-hmm. But we have different definitions of uh, how we got there and how do we get out. I don't think that it's because of what we did to their super, super, super fucking ancestors. Because that really, that that number one, that goes to, to nature, not nurture. Um, uh, because, I, I mean, we all have people in our lives... Uh, you know, we, where we've broken the chain, right? So it's possible. And just because you're, you know, off-white or whatever, you can still break the chain too, right? But um, I feel like it's more the 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 fucking quote unquote help that we've been giving them. Here, we're gonna sw- we're gonna give you this land. We're not gonna do anything for the land. Right. <laughs> we're just gonna give it to you and not give you any like structure or like you know super like you know uh, government. Like we'll we'll give you the money. We'll let you have the land. We won't tax you. Here here's a fucking casino. But like this is that's all we're giving them, and then that's where you belong. And so there's just this sequestered weird little group of people who are like, well, this is what who we are. This is our identity. It's a complete is that, disaster. It's a fucking complete disaster. And I don't think it's because we stole their fucking land and killed a lot of them. 400 you know fucking years ago i think it's way i think it's now now what we're doing to them now is the problem here here's all this money where this is who you are you're a you're a shit on class here's more money here's a, and we just teach them and we infer over and over both in, 
in, in our action and in our words that they are a lower class in that in that way. No question. And and, and I think I think all are to blame if you want to look at like the political spectrum of it. Uh, to your point, I mean, it's not a, a left issue or a right issue. It's an American issue, and right. um, you know, uh, but that's an example of where like we have done wrong, right? And then the question becomes, okay, so what, how do we undo the wrong? And right. I think a lot of the ways that people, and I'm not even going to politicize it, people try to undo past wrongs are by making things even worse. Um, right. And, and, and it's not for, 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 for like malintent. It's just because people don't think through like the long-term they effects don't think of through. the short-term exactly. fix they're trying the to create. The end game. The fucking end you know? game. If even Stevens, if we run that all the way across the board, it means only 14% of, of our television right? will be black people. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, you know, you, you look at, uh, like, okay, when when social welfare programs began, basically the New Deal after the Great Depression, uh, there was an absolute necessity for somebody somehow to, help, to step right. in and help the poor, right. right? And it was, in my opinion, you know, probably necessary at the time i didn't live then i haven't talked to many people that were around then uh, right. you know so I, I don't know it and i'm not going to pretend to be some sort of expert right but that economic dynamic is no longer here today right. and yet those programs have only increased mm -hmm. and all it's done is taken away the incentive for people that are relying upon them to actually care for themselves and to believe that i am qualified or capable of actually earning and succeeding on my own right, right. It's, it's this victim mentality of you know, I, I uh, uh, I'll, I'll never get out of this, so I'll just keep living on whatever I can get from the government. And and you and I, on a personal basis, have lived that way. You and I, on a personal basis, before fuck it, we we believed things about our very identity. No, that shit. we that no, I'll never get out I'll of this. Never get out this of this. This is who I yeah. am. When I'm I was a loser. I'm a piece of shit. I mean, Absolutely. I lived in homeless shelters. I lived in fucking street corners. Like right. You know, I I and I I fundamentally believed that that was just what I was destined to do for who the rest I of am. my life. Correct. Right, right, right. And I, I actually have made that analogy before that, um, you know, so so what is the solution, people ask? What is the solution to fixing the, the welfare state if, if, if my solution is to remove it? And no, I'm not talking about like ripping a Band-Aid off and just saying mm -hmm. all of your benefits are gone, you right, know, figure right, it out right, for right, yourself. Right. But there needs to be like a like a, a planned out way of, you know, getting people to be more self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. And I do equate it to the issue of an alcoholic or an addict hitting a bottom right? right in the sense that if i in my alcoholism had never been allowed to hit a bottom i right. never would have sought the ways to get out of that disease sure and similarly by the government providing this constant safety net to our poor and needy right they are never going to find that quote unquote bottom that's going to get them to actually say hold on this fucking sucks and i need to actually do something about this instead right. it's just this is my life and this is what i'm doomed or, or stuck in and there's nothing right. i can do about it but I get my food stamps and my and my monthly check and, you know, I got food on the table and I can do what I need to take care of the little few things that I need to take care of. Right. So I'll, I'll be fine. Right? right. And, you know, you hear those stories of people, uh, you know, I love John Stossel, even though he's a fucking porn stash looking weirdo. And, <laughs> um, you know, he, he's brought on like former welfare recipients that were completely of the mindset that it was the right way to take care of them and now that they have climbed out of it they've completely changed their view and said right. wow right. i would have gotten out of it much sooner had i not had those things that i was being given to just sustain me i was thinking about that on my personal on my on a personal level over the last few uh, i mean it's always kind of been this way but especially over the last year and a half i've started it, it started with incremental changes in hard work <laughs> So like incremental changes where I would ramp up the hard work and suddenly I start having the outcomes that I want because I'm working hard and I'm willing to put in, I'm willing to go, all right, fine, I won't eat the pizza that mm. I really want to fucking eat. Mm -hmm. I'll, I will I will stay, I will let myself suck it up. I will suck it up a little bit. It's an important spiritual tool to suck it up. And because of that, I now am way fucking, I'm, I'm, I have, I'm, for the first time, I'm like literally at the gym today, just like, wow, like, I feel like one of those gym guys. Like, I don't look like a fat shit. Like, I don't, I don't hate myself. Like, that's, that's, that's not a thing that I thought I was. My identity was a fat guy. My identity. You yeah. know what I mean? And two it years was how ago, I if were. somebody had told you that you were capable of getting to where you are today, you would have laughed them out of the fucking room. 
Right. And I said, there's no way I can achieve that. And it was in small ways. I would tell myself all the time, oh, I'm just, I'm always going to, I'll never be skinny. You know, I'll never be, I'll never be, I'll ne- you know, maybe I can lose a little bit, but I'll never be. And I just, you repeat that shit over and over and it becomes your identity and you actually believe and it. And not only is there the issue of like the, the lack of belief in oneself, you know, as, as you talk about with your own experience, but there's, there's the victim mentality too, you right. know? Mm-hmm. As long as the the, the 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 white male is out there, right? Others cannot succeed, right? right. As though it's a zero sum game, and it's right. not a zero sum game. That's not right. the way that this economy works. It's not a zero sum game. For someone to succeed, somebody else does not have to fail. Do you remember? Did you ever listen to Patrice Patrice O'Neill? No. So Patrice used to talk about how the difference between the Jews and the blacks, and like why they had different trajectories, is because the Jews had a face. To the evil, and then the and then and the, the blacks just had a skin color, right? So like the Jews had Hitler, okay, Hitler's dead, you know, or Pharaoh, okay, Pharaoh's dead, all right, you know, whatever it is, we we you know whatever, and uh, and the blacks have have had just a skin color. They don't have like one exact person, you know what I mean? Not even in the fucking Civil War times, you know what I mean? So if you extrapolate that, I kind of feel like well, obviously I'm, I'm not I'm not saying you could speak for. Patrice or anybody else, but I feel like if that's the case, like part of the other difference between the black plight and the Jewish plight is that the Jews, Hitler died, mm-hmm. and then they were able to go, okay, now where are we at? Let's take now an inventory. Yeah. Now what are we doing? Okay, we may be working from the ground up, but at least we're working. At least we're on the way up. Yeah. No, that makes sense. I don't feel like we'll let because of our shit white guild. We're not going to let their demon, their Hitler die let the black people's hitler die let let the victimizing of themselves die let that shit die and it, if you want genuine equality it means i can call a black person like i can play the dozens i can fucking i can wear i mean uh, yeah blackface from dozens. <laughs> we should have i'm not saying right now no but, but to I'm your, saying even like, steven's point like if she yeah. go ever, you know if you go on it we should have it right and, right and, and not just that but like I, 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 like if it were if a word hurts you if me saying nigger hurts you like that used to be called you're childish like that used to be called you're sensitive now it means you're a hero like if i say a word and it scars you now you're a hero i thought that meant you were a bitch i thought that meant you were pussy if you couldn't sack up oh where sticks and stones may break my bones but words can never hurt me unless i'm black go fuck yourself first of all that that (laughs) saying has been out the window i mean shit (laughs) colleges and universities have trigger warnings now before they talk about certain topics like Man, words hurt everybody these days. It's pathetic. Uh, but I don't think it really hurts. Like genuine ass, real ass motherfuckers. Like real ass motherfuckers. They won't. They might want to punch you in the face, but like they'll be like, "Hey, dude, what the fuck?" You know, right? But you could probably talk to them about it. I've said nigger in front of other black people. Other black people. <laughs> hey, three sixties motherfucker. But but like real ass motherfuckers who who have their balls like they're not offended they're not like hurt it's white people sure. it's fucking white people or black women like fuck it again no. it's it's the too much centered on the feelings yeah i mean it's, it's fucking that, it's the whole, females like, a, a good <laughs> yeah there you go and it's it, a good example of it is the issue of cultural appropriation right yeah you know uh i've seen some pretty like p- like perfectly captured videos sure they're by like right leaning or you know outlets like Prager University mm-hmm, and stuff like mm-hmm. that, which I love. Sure. Um, but, you know, where, uh, uh, what's that guy's name from Prager U, the young guy, the Will Witt or something like that, I mm-hmm. think his name is. And he, he dresses up in like your stereotypical Mexican costume, right? Right. And you're Latino, you're uh, Puerto Rican, I believe. Right, right, right. And uh, he goes to Berkeley, I think it is, or some California university, and he walks around with a poncho and a fake mustache and a sombrero on, mm-hmm. and, you know, he's just walking around campus. Right. And, you know, students are ripping off his clothes and cultural appropriation, you racist bigot, get the fuck out of here with that shit. You can't be here with that and blah, 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 blah. Right. Mostly, mostly white. Mostly white kids. Almost entirely white students. Where, and he asked them, like, what, what's the reason? Uh, yeah. And it's this. it's this, Because you're not uh, Mexican. You're, you're mocking their culture. You're mocking with right. the, you know. And by the way, but, the tone. You white women are the fucking worst. But then he goes the into, tone. like, like. <laughs> Mexican village with like actual Mexican Americans, right. and they are celebrating his costume. Right. They love it. They're giving him hugs. They're thinking like, "Man, this guy's awesome." He's celebrating our culture. Yeah, they're making fun of like him because the actual it, you know, his, people that yeah, those white women are trying to protect right. Right. are actually like loving what he's doing, and right. yet they're the ones that are somehow quote unquote protecting them. Right? I mean, it's right. Just, it's just the complete opposite. Do you feel? Do you feel like part of this? 
so I think ultimately, it, obviously, it's lots of different things. But I feel like part of it is that men have stopped being men. <laughs> Fuck yes. I always bring it back to this. Fuck I always yes. blame the female. But, like, the females are, are certainly out of their fucking minds. But I think part of the reason why... I think females are kind of always been a little nuts. But the problem is is that guys have stopped being like, hey, like, shut the fuck up. Like, hey, w- you know, on a, on a personal basis. I'm not saying we need to tell women, you know, in the street to t- shut the fuck up. Mm. I'm mean, sometimes. Beta but, uh, males are the bane of my existence. Yeah, dude. It really is a motherfucker. And they are everywhere because they are taught and we are taught that being masculine is bad. Right. From an early age, school children right. are taught that you can't be a boy as a, you know, because being male, being masculine, is a negative thing. You right. can't be that way. And it's just, it's fucking up our entire culture and society. And remember that thing you said a minute ago, or a little while ago, where, like, not even not even tr- teaching boys to be beta, or to be, you know, that, yeah, beta. Teaching boys to be beta is not, not only does that not help the cause of genuine-ass feminism, it actually hurts like it, it, it's hurting boys. Like it's hurting men. If you're told as you're born and you're growing up that you're bad, then of course, like you're gonna believe that about yourself. You're gonna have that identity. Like I'm bad. Like I shouldn't. Do- I mean, I can't. I'm trying to watch Parks and Rec, but like everywhere I turn on Parks and Rec is just bitch, bitch, bitch. Ron Swanson is the only motherfucker who's like, 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 and even then he's like, oh, I love Power of Woman because that's what I'm supposed to say. Right. The writers on the, I'm sorry, Michael Sh- Schnur or whatever, I'm or sure, like, I'm, I'm grateful for what you've given to comedy and, to the, and, and for the hours of entertainment, but motherfucker, why do all comedy writers have to be bitches? Why do all comedy writers have to tuck their fucking balls? Like, they're all into, oh, I got, like, what was he, um... They were saying something where, like, Leslie was like, I'm a dictator, blah, blah, blah. And then he's like, uh, 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 faggot ass Ben Wyatt leans in, you know. And yeah, he is a fucking f- queer. Um, and not in a good way, like in a shitty, shitty beta male way. He leans in and like, am I turned on that you're a dictator? Like, stop, 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 dude. Be, be fucking real. Be fucking real. <laughs> oh, I mean, I'll give you a very recent example in my own life of a guy who I never ever pictured as being any sort of beta. He's, he's, he's just, he's a, he's an African-American black guy, kind of redundant there, <laughs> um, that, you know, uh, has some, some conservative, uh, kind of moderate views and all of a sudden he starts just because he's very anti-trump he Mm. has just all of a sudden shifted into this fucking pussy beta male and it just really sickens me and what does it what does it look like so like an example that i just recently uh saw from him uh specifically was about this like little debate discussion whatever you want to call it between nancy pelosi trump and uh oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. schumer in, in the oval office or wherever the fuck they were sitting right and his whole comment and post about it was like, this isn't even political in nature. These are his words. This is about like men versus women. And if you see that room, how Donald Trump just doesn't even let Nancy Pelosi have a voice and he talks over her and he just makes her feel like just this miniature little woman because there are men talking. And that couldn't be further from what the it's fuck was happening true. in that room. It's it not couldn't true. be fucking yeah. further from it. She was not saying shit because she didn't have shit to say. And she right. didn't have anything that was of substance or value to bring to the conversation. Right. It had nothing to do with the fucking whether she had a dick or a pussy. It had nothing to do with it. And here's why. Here's why it feeds itself. Because beta males will believe that shit because they don't know actually female. They don't actually know females. Guys who have been in genuine relationships know how fucking nuts you cocksuckers are. And I mean that with all the love of my heart. I'm glad that you, you, you have taken the time to fucking date my stupid ass and to fuck my stupid ass. But I'm telling you right now, you cocksuckers are fucking nuts. And so if on a real basis, whether you're white, black, whatever, you know females can be off the wall fucking nuts, then you know Nancy Pol- you can't you can't just automatically go... Oh, I believe I believe her because she has a vagina. Her like, you own can't, fucking party you know what I mean? hates her. I mean, she's <laughs> she's insane, dude. But when you have only like three or four women in your whole life that you have had sex with, of course no, you're gonna I believe all women. Uh, of, of course, and you know, and then you know, it, it's you know, and then the the thing that really pissed me off was like a bunch of women comment on the thread, right? They're like. You know, say it louder for the people in the back. And I love you for making this comment. And then he replies, like, just saying what everybody else is thinking, but nobody will say. And I was like, motherfucker, nobody's thinking that. Right. Which You're translate- not even thinking that. Exactly. You are not even thinking that. Which translates into, please fuck me. That's yeah. what it translates That's exactly into. exactly what when it was. When he commented back, 
thank you know yeah just tell him what everyone thinks then he can dm All later on and say is, hey can you please have sex with me like in some way or yes. another maybe i can and he nice doesn't my realize that this. he is completely confined to a life of friend zone right, right because, because girls don't like that shit. no shit girls don't like a guy right. who's like yes dear whatever you say honey i don't mm. know what do you want to eat be fucking real your pussy decides that shit not your fucking brain get the fuck man oh. pelosi still if she if she's in a genuine fine relationship she still looks up to her man not looks up to like i i cap him i don't have any i don't have any beliefs but you have to respect the dude you're with you have to like go like this motherfucker's a man otherwise you're not going to be with that motherfucker go rewatch you or any of your listeners even like five minutes of that little fucking scenario right and listen to what she's trying to say i have listened to it and honest to god i know exactly what she's doing uh. she had some sort of you know, staffers tell her that a bunch of ping phrases tested well in a focus group. Nice. And all she's doing is just repeating those things. Right. You know, that they don't even make sense in the context of the conversation. She's just like, well, this tested well, so I'll say, you know, government shutdown. And like, it, it was like, right. where the fuck did that come from? Like, she's just, she's literally just a political robot. I don't care if she's male, female, or trans. I don't care. It has right. nothing to do with her right. gender. It has to do with the fact that she was fucking worthless. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Now we get into it. I like that. Can we uh, let? Can we take a quick? Uh, it's seven oh five. Yeah, yeah. Let's I, go. I don't, I'm gonna smoke wanna, a cigarette I don't eat and this fucking uh, shit while while we're yeah. Recording. I'm gonna smoke a cigarette and take a piss. Yeah, I'm gonna piss while I eat Chipotle. Mm, and Ladies probably shit your pants simultaneously. <laughs> exactly. All right, we'll be right back. <laughs> All right, now let's look at this ship. So whew, that was fucking good. Sorry. I did actually urinate while shoveling Chipotle into my face. That's impressive. I just let it. I I dropped. I dropped the just the zipper. Let it hang. I've been utilizing that front that front underwear boxer brief pocket. See, I don't like it. You don't like it? No, it's it's hard to like get in and out of there, and it just like it, it's just it's claustrophobic for my junk. See, I I I, I obviously I you know I don't want just the like. Uh, isn't there an underwear that doesn't have it? Yeah, I guess some of them, uh, some of the other ones don't. But yours has like the overlapping flap, like the double flap. Yeah, I can do. I can do the overlapping flap. I mean, it it does constrict a little bit if you let it hang too much, or if you let it like cons- sometimes it's like okay, now I'm like pissing like a like if you put your foot like on a on a on a on a hose, it makes it stronger. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But it also is it it is helpful to utilize that because then it can hold it in place, right? And then also, uh, 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 it's not as like flappy. Like if I was trying to piss out of boxers, I mean, come on now, it no, would be all over the place. It, it served you well while trying to eat and piss, but how often is that really going to be taking place? Right? You don't know my life. I, I don't. That is a fact. <laughs> you know, I don't. I don't usually bring my Chipotle to the urinal with me. You know? I am. But a my issue is my my balls, man. Like they're just Why? they're just they're robust, bro. They're 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 droopy and they're just they're like you know they're. Are you they're, are you old? Uh, how old are you? Uh, I'm 35. All right, so uh, they've always been droopy. I had droopy balls when I was like 16, bro. Is this is this Chicks, like a, like I didn't know it? It's one of those situations problem? that like you don't really know c- until you like start <laughs> hooking up with girls and they're like, bro, your balls are droopy, droopy, even when it's cold. No, I mean okay. they'll, they'll retract. They they do the normal shit, but man, you know it's uh it's uh, hey, you know. So should. it looks like a like they called you pendulum sack. Or like, what did it? What it was it like? A was it like that that thing that David got Goliath right, with? We're not. Let's let's <laughs> reel it in here a little bit. It's not like they're down to my fucking knees. <laughs> you just hit Goliath in the forehead with your sack. God, this is why this is. I I shouldn't have. Did you watch that weird video I did? Which one? I, I done did. A lot of weird I did. Videos. I did. I do do a lot of weird videos. Which 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 um. <laughs> Tasted better than it sounded. What's the? Would, uh, uh, you listened to some some episodes. What were the ones you listened to again? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I uh, I listened first. I prioritized the people that I know personally. So that was Danny, the female Trump supporter, mm-hmm. and Mike, the Southerner, one and mm-hmm. two. Okay. Um, 
and then I've listened to bits and pieces of several others, but those are the three that I've like right. fully listened to straight through, beginning to end. Right. All all interesting topics, people that I love, yourself included. So always good to hear their perspectives and interesting you know, topics like uh, hmm, like Drew B. Ball. <laughs> interesting topics I, I like that part. like there was like there was possibly a, 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 a someone someone else named. Did she? Did we keep in her, your name or did we? Did yeah, we I was referred out? to as Alex B. So you oh, okay. cut out my last name. I appreciate that. But yeah, I was referred to in that uh, in that podcast. <laughs> Very surprising. I was sitting at my desk. Out, did you want me to cut out the B? In no, this? no, oh, okay, we're, right. we're money. We're good. No, I don't I say was... we're money. God damn it, these thirty-five-year-olds. <clears throat> you watched fucking swingers once, and now all of a sudden you're fucking. Yeah, man, this place <laughs> is dead anyway. <laughs> but yeah, I did. I did come up in that uh, in that podcast, and I was I was flattered. I was a little. <laughs> I was a little surprised. I was a little surprised, especially after all this Goliath talk. Now it's going to yeah, be a whole now, other. I mean, you know, <laughs> Danny, I love you, uh, but I, I was sitting at my desk in my office with my headphones on. I just started cracking up. <laughs> Why is that racist guy turning bright red? <laughs> mm. Oh man! Mm-hmm. But yeah, so what with it? Do you remember what some of the other ones that you listened to? Oh man! Anything you know. like strongly disagree with? No, nothing that really stuck out as like a strong disagreement. I think there were things. I mean, look, I, I like to think of myself as pretty open minded and accepting of the fact that people have different views and and beliefs. And so, why uh, is that a conservative thing? Like, I don't, I don't understand. It's the why moral it's thing now... that we talked about at the beginning. Like, yeah. if I don't have the same views as somebody on the left, right. I am immoral. I'm bad. I am wrong. Right. I am evil. Right? right, that's why conservative speakers can't go to college campuses and just even talk. Like they can't right. even just express. I mean, I remember. I'm not that old. I'm 35 years old. Right, when I was in college, I remember this. It was like one of the greatest. I, I mean, here I am, 12, 13 years later, and I remember actually 14 years later because I remember it was 2004 because it was the election cycle. Mm. <clears throat> and like this is what to me higher education is supposed to be all about. Which is, I was taking, of all things, an ethics course. Mm-hmm. Um, sure enough, you know, not my major, but going to a university that required like liberal arts education, you had to take all those electives that were outside of your expertise. So, I'm, was it was it hard to sit in those chairs because your balls like would hang into? I mean, into sometimes the... I'll sit on my left nut, and it's not right. the greatest feeling. <laughs> But uh, but you can cover it because it's like those seats that like those theater seats. I mean, if you, you know want to see them, I will show them. <laughs> and they're nice and like manscaped I don't, for you. Ugh. I manscape the shit out of those things. Yeah. There's not. I mean, I'm there. You do have to manscape, except for the center. Except for the center. The center's always <laughs> that no. that one patch just all gets no clear. hair. All clear. Well, you don't have to. You're right. But I mean, it's all clear down there. I mean. <laughs> Taint and all. It's just hairless. See, sometimes taint's a little... Because then you let it go a couple of days, man. Um, it's true. How do you... How do you? Okay, let's get into this for a second. Do you... Because if you, if you manscape taint, that means like you're either itching two days later or you are you are shaving again. What does that look like to you? So I, I do go through the itch phase. and uh, you, you let it chia. It's I out. So, okay. I mean, look, like... I, I, uh, See, it's hard. This is what this is why. I mean, I the problem it is like it, it does grow, but it's like a veritable forest when you don't touch it for a while, especially after you shave it a few times. I mean, it, it comes back in force, and right. so right, uh, you know, you have to keep on top of that shit. And I know eventually I'm going to get old enough to the point that it's just like it's not worth dealing with anymore, and I'm going to have a fucking jufro growing out of my ball sack, and that's right. all right, you know. But right. right now I'm not having that, and right. I think most of the ladies appreciate it. Right. Uh, I'm sure there are some See, ladies there out there that some... actually like the hair, and that's cool. And yeah, there are. Uh, from from what I've I'm heard, I'm pretty like, metrosexual, and you I'm keep not... it like I, I can I, I keep it trim, but I don't want the whole fucking thing. I, I did that once, and it was like, eh, you know, I, I, this feels this feels strange. This I don't, feels I don't, like I'm gonna I don't be in a shave porn off movie. all my pubes. Like I, I've that's got, what I'm saying. Yeah, but like, like if I've... you if why would the, why would you taint? Okay, all right. Now I know what's happening here. All right, hang on a second. This is let's 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 w- ladies and gentlemen we are on conservative so the question on everyone's mind do you eat ass occasionally i have partaken in a little bit of okay. uh, donut and chocolate starfish <laughs> a little crispy cream was it or was chocolate it safeway starfish. safeway select <laughs> chocolate starfish and hot dog flavored water now remember limp biscuit i do i do i do now god that's bad music it's really bad. Now, 
Except for West Borland. Like, I don't know why West Borland would have such a he shitty... He's the weird bassist with the eye thing, right? He's like, a guitarist, you know, yeah. Guitarist. Did you ever hear of Big Dumb Face? Big mm. Dumb Face is a fucking metal slash insane... Go look up... Ladies and gentlemen, go look up Big Dumb Face. It's the stupidest... It's West Borland and his brother. And they literally just made this whole album, like, in their house over the course of a weekend. It was great... Shitty, wonderful, awful music, but it's definitely more soul and more balls than Limp Bizkit has ever had. Anyway, to get back to the topic. Now, as part of this go- Goliath weapon, <laughs> or, or this David weapon, is it is it shorn because one might assume that you enjoy if the ladies taste the Safeway Select? For sure. One hundred percent. No denying it. When was the first time you got your ass eaten? Oh man, I remember exactly. <laughs> Fucking life changing, dude. Is this is this cal- is this college as well? Because yep. it fits into the college yep, conversation, like it's we were talking same about. Same year of college. Interesting. No, it wasn't. It was a year before, sophomore year of college. Man. See, I wouldn't. And, I would. I don't know if I would go for a software. So, uh, fucking. And, and I would never name the woman. Junior or involved. higher. Um, no, of course not. Why would you? No. no. But but my but some of my friends from college mm-hmm. know that it happened because I might have <laughs> kissed and told, if you want to call it that. <laughs> or did you? But because uh, I remember, I remember my Showed fraternity. A I'm, of her I'm a frat boy, uh, right. and uh, my fraternity has like this White annual devil. party, right? Um, just all that privilege just right, oozing right, out right, of me. Right, right. Uh, my fraternity has this really big theme party every year, uh, and uh, themed after Studio Fifty Four. And a bunch of my buddies from high school who went to colleges all over the country would come in every year for it. And I lived in this like shitty little dorm room with bunk beds, and all my buddies were piled into this room, sleeping on the floor and futon and shit. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was on the bottom bunk of this bunk bed, but I had these like thick sheets that were kind of like blackout shades on the side of the bunk bed that would basically enclose it so i was hooking up with this girl like after the party my buddies all like passed out still awake young being young is the worst and she just starts going to town and i was like whoa 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 what is going on there and then i was older than you were no we were both sophomores okay so we were both like 20 years old 19 20 years old and man it was life-changing it was i mean it'll fucking just i will it, it it wasn't it wasn't it was all right but like I don't know I don't, it just I mean, wasn't I, I mean I, I still shorn I still get it I understand but like I don't I don't but I remember uh, asking a serious girlfriend soon after uh, like to you know hey maybe you should try this and she was like you're fucking sick so how old was she though same age yeah we dated in high school and then like kind of often again on again in college because uh, we went to different schools and I remember bringing it up with her because I had enjoyed the experience with the girl in school and right. she was not having it. I got to tell you, this is another thing that was on my fucking mind. I won't, obviously, I can't name names or whatever, but I was hanging out with this girl, seeing her a couple of times and there was this, it, it, it came to this point and I, I won't go into it, but if it, here's a, it's a bad sign when you're in your mid to late thirties and you and you don't know that a guy that you've friend zoned a guy and that he wants to fuck you. Mm, like it's tough. a bad sign it's if tough. you're that old and you're like, Oh, and then he started sending me weird text messages. I was like, I thought we were friends. Bitch, you're thirty fucking you're thirty five. You you're she fucking twenty three or higher thing and you don't like the mentally male understand to say those things to, to, to make it's just it's just a game. It's man. a disconnect between what I believe on paper and what I genuinely believe. Mm-hmm. It's a disconnect, and I am the fucking connector. <laughs> yeah, I am the fucking There's corrector. There's no bullshit. You cut God through the it. bullshit and you just lay it out. Jesus, out there. absolutely. Sorry, continue. Anyway, so let, all right, I'm gonna bring it, <laughs> hone it back in here because we were talking about my experience in college from an educational. Standpoint. Oh yeah, well that was like educational as it well. Was. It was. It was very educational. It changed my life. Right. Um. So junior year of college, I was taking this ethics course as one of my electives, and it happened to be during the bush Kerry election of 2004. Now, I'll pause you. I've talked about this before, and you, you remember about this time, but you were also, you were college-minded, so you remember more than I would. Even during John Kerry and versus George W. Bush, it was the end of the world if, if fucking, if Bush won, right? You remember that, too. Not you remember like Bush was 2016. Hitler. Not no, not like, like it, but it was. Bush was fucking Hitler. It's all relative, and, I mean, when I now that I've lived through 2016, like, it's not, it, they doesn't even hold a candle to what, I mean, because here's, here's my point that all I'm right. going to make. 
Uh, and and you you are right to a certain degree. Uh, but number one, colleges were actually a place of at least mine was. I can't speak right. for every. Were sure. actually a place of like honest discourse, debate, discussion. Okay. And in this ethics course, it met Mondays and Wednesdays in like a big lecture hall where every student, you know, 150, 200 students, whatever it was, and the major professor, the main professor, would actually teach like in front of the full lecture hall. And then on Fridays, that big lecture hall broke out into small group discussions that were chosen by the students, right? So you said, I want to take and focus on the ethics of this, that, or the other. Well, mine happened to be like the ethics of politics. Uh Uh-huh. And I remember, I even remember the room that we met in. It was a small group. I'd say 20 students. You know, m- mind you, these are 19 to 22-year-olds. All, yeah, at an institution of higher learning, a, a you know, a, a respected you went to, you private went to university. Ass Eaters United yes, University. Yes, yes, A, a respected uh, top 20 ranked university uh, of higher learning. And But, I mean, you know, me, conservative-minded, uh white privileged male if you want to label it in the same room as a lot of my peers who mostly were left-leaning young-minded you know kind of politically trained (laughs) brainwashed students now much to a lesser degree than i think professors do these days so but there was also scholarship athletes who might not have come from the same financial background as some of us did there were um you know males females and everything you know straight homophobic or just homosexual and everything in between so i mean true diversity now i'm not just talking diversity of skin color but i'm talking diversity of mindset diversity of viewpoints diversity of financial and socioeconomic right. background right and we debated these things in true debate and nobody was told your opinion doesn't matter because you're a white male and you can't have an opinion about uh this that or the other because you've never I, you know i was allowed to have an opinion on abortion i was allowed to have an opinion on stem cell research that was a big ping issue of that time stem mm-hmm. cell research because george w bush outlawed right. it which was right. fucking idiotic okay here comes somebody who voted for him who's right leaning another mm-hmm. thing that i strongly disagreed with mm-hmm. because it just was was horribly religiously tied and sure. also had no benefits to our society but anyway you know, we were able to sit in a room with this TA kind of, you know, facilitating and actually have debate, discussion, disagreement, and nobody hated each other. Nobody called each other bad names and thought of each other as evil. It was just, oh, that person disagrees with me. I disagree with them. We view things differently, but I respect them and I appreciate their views and I'm, I can have a conversation. Would, would, would you raise voices, though? I don't remember ever having people raise voices. I remember raising my voice with the TA. And that was only because he gave me a shitty grade on a paper, and I knew it was because he didn't agree with my politics. I called him out <laughs> on it, and he, he admitted to his bias, because I wrote a damn good fucking paper, and he was, like, you know, marking up a bunch of bullshit, right, and, right, right, and right. I remember it was on, like, Epictetus or some philosopher. You know, we're, we're sitting around in the lecture hall, and we're t- discussing all, like, the greatest f- philosophical minds of our time, or of historical times, you know, sure. from... Aristotle and to Kant and everything in between and and you know I love Thomas Kant. A, <laughs> Thomas Aquinas and so you know and then incorporating those mantras and those viewpoints into like the idea of of how it plays into today's political you know, elections and it was a, it was a fascinating discussion but that was the beauty of it it was a discussion nobody was shut down because their views didn't align with what was quote unquote right. supposed to be believed right. and now if a conservative viewpoint is brought onto a college campus there are literally riots to throw mm-hmm. them out of there right if uh, you know, and the, and it's and it's worse for the students if dennis prager can't get a speech on i think it was university of wisconsin like dennis prager is like a hasidic jew very conservative but by no means is he i have listened to a million talks by dennis prager i have never heard a bigoted viewpoint a hateful viewpoint anything that even remotely just even comes close to something along the lines of hate speech and just because he has the label conservative attached to him a bunch of ignorant students just see the word conservative and they're like, no, this can't happen here. We can't have that. And again, it also and goes the to the idea... It because they don't want their indoctrination to be prevented. Right. It goes to the idea of different ways to deal with it. It's not just he has an R next to his name or he has conservative next to his name. 
when you disagree with immigration or oh, I'm sorry, when you would disagree with certain versions of illegal immigration, you are labeled a racist because they're because they're brown. Right. right? No, no talk of, as an example, the Mexican uh, government who didn't want these motherfuckers from Honduras coming and running through sure. their country. No, <laughs> you but know it's America's mean? problem. It's always right. America's problem. Brown, you know, and, good, white, bad. I know. And, you know, and then, it, well, and the, the sickest, saddest point is, you know, the, the constant hypocrisy. You know, right. I could pull up a million YouTube videos of Barack Obama and Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton and... Uh, Joe Biden and all these people speaking and saying literally the exact same messages that Donald Trump is giving. Right. Granted, in a much more politically worded, you know, uh, eloquent tone. Probably spelled better. Because the yeah. man talks like a fucking retard. I know. But literally oh, and giving, by the way, literally you said the, the word, exact same message. You said the word retard because you hate all Down syndrome. I'm just making yeah. sure. I'm just although confirming. I, although I do sit on a board of Best Buddies, which is an organization which supports those uh, people with intellectual disabilities. So I probably shouldn't drop that word. <laughs> Fuck that. They can understand context. They are not fuck. I mean, stop, stop. Someone told them to get offended over that word. For sure. Sorry. But um, to, to my point, like the, literally the exact same message being expressed by those politicians right. who they would hang, right. going back to the nutsack, they would hang from those they would nutsacks hang them from their no matter what they say. Dave and then all of a sudden the big bad evil Nazi named Donald Trump, who I can get into the whole, you know, Nazism being assigned to conservatism, which is just absolutely idiocy. But right. anyway... Um, I'd like to. I'd people like do to know bring, that Nazis were socialists, right? I'd like to bring something up because it interests me. I want to know because you said you're pro, you're pro choice, and I think I am in, in in some ways. Here's where I'm coming from at it. I'm not saying I'm 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 pro life, but call it what it is. That's my main thing. Is not I'm not saying I'm anti choice because I'm pro choice, you know. But I, call it what it is. So here's the thing. So as an example. Um, when uh, when I think I talked about this, but when prohibition was happening, mm-hmm. towards the end of it, they were giving uh, uh, doctors were uh, prescribing alcohol because oh, it has uh, health benefits. You know, they were they were lying about what it was because people wanted prescriptions for alcohol, right? Uh, call it what it is. Meaning, if you're killing your baby, mm-hmm. fine. But call it killing your baby. Well, okay. Don't me, don't call it. You know what I mean? Because some people me, want to want to open the gates so wide that they that they're willing to like they don't want to hurt the person who's going to abort the baby at two weeks. So they want to they want they don't want any restrictions whatsoever. I don't agree with that, but I am saying call it what the fuck it is. Let let me let me clarify my stance on abortion. Right. Yes, I label myself pro-choice. Sure. I am not pro-abortion. Right. I would never, even if I knocked up, and I've never been in this circumstance, knock on wood, right. so I can't necessarily emotionally put myself this, there, this but is, I would I never ask... particle board. I would, I would never ask a woman to abort a child because I didn't want to have a child with her. I would I would live with my, my mistake and my actions, and I would I would be a man and actually take care of the child as I, as right. I, as I have earned through my own doing. Right. Where my stance comes in is back to the issue of government overstepping mm-hmm. its reach. Mm-hmm. The government mm-hmm. has no reason to meddle in a person's decision or choice to have or not have a child. Um, but what? It, w- but I, I will bring up the point that you said one of the only basis, one of the only jobs of a government is to protect bodies, protect the humans. Sure. That technically is... a human body growing in that person i hear you and i agree i do i do believe that there is a human body i'm not one of those people that says well it's not out of the womb so it's therefore not a child i believe that an abortion is killing a baby like you said and again i am not pro abortion i would never uh, condone the killing of a baby sure however i don't agree that it's the government's decision to say whether we should or shouldn't i think between a conversation with a doctor, the mother, and the father, I think a decision can be made that is, sure. you know, and in certain circumstances, uh, you know, I'm sure it is the best thing for the child, sadly, because of the circumstances that the baby may have been born or raised in. And, you know, uh, the saddest reality is, you know, the whole Planned Parenthood argument. 
uh, oh, the, the Republicans want to defund Planned Parenthood and take away, you know, medical care for women. Bullshit. It has nothing to do with taking away medical care for women. It's the tax money should not be going towards killing babies. That's all it comes down to. Right. Not to mention, do you, Planned Parenthood supporters, do you know where Margaret Sanger's beliefs were rooted in? Do you know? Yeah. Margaret Sanger, who's the founder of Planned Parenthood, literally created Planned Parenthood to try to minimize the black population in America. Interesting. That is her reason for creating Planned Parenthood. Where, where, where can we look that up? If it was, uh... um, I don't know. Look up Margaret Sanger views. I guarantee you, like a simple Google search <laughs> would give you that. I mean, the lady was fucking racist and evil, and right. Right. you know, I mean, sure, there were like some other context behind her purposes, and some of it, of course, was like women's health. I bet I don't know, but I also know for facts that she is quoted and right. is known as believing that. It was a way to curb the growth of the black population and, right. you know, stop it from booming. Now, if a, if a, I, I, I do want to talk about this a little bit longer, if you're willing to. Um, obviously, it's 7.38, so, you know, we'll, we'll start wrapping up in a little bit. But as far as the baby thing, I don't know about that because, for me, I agree with you. I don't think it's the government's job to decide what happens with someone's body. But if it is a body... And it's not going to kill the mother. I don't know. It feels weird to me. It feels like, well, okay, maybe, all right, listen, you know, it sucks that this is growing inside you and you're going to have stretch marks and it's the painful shit experience and it's really, but I mean, I'm sorry, but like. Fundamentally, like I couldn't agree with you more. Okay. I I have to tell you, like from from a moral standpoint, I oppose abortion 100%. From a political standpoint, I don't believe that the government should be getting involved in those right. types of things. Are you libertarian? From that libertarian standpoint, it's that is that is my decision right. as a mother, father, human being. I mean, fuck. If I want to euthanize myself, get the fuck out of my way, government. That no, is what I agree I with that. Do, I agree right? with that. So but like, if you if you decide to euthanize your son, that's definitely a gray area, right? And, <laughs> I, I, but once well, it once the baby steps I mean, out of the morals puss. and politics should be separated. <laughs> uh, like uh, all it comes down to, like simply put, is that the government shouldn't have a say. Now, who should have the say? That's a whole different question. And uh, do I agree that abortion should happen or that people should have like paid access by my taxpayer dollars to go kill their baby if they want to? Fuck no. Right. You know, but that doesn't make me pro-abortion i'm pro-choice right. I'm, no, I'm, I'm, and i'm not pressing you on no it. no I'm no, no. I'm just, I, I think I'm, it's a fair I like question i think it's a fair apart question these ideas i think it's a fair question and, and 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 that's where like i have to realize that like my emotions right. do not control my beliefs at all times like right. emotionally like yeah like i am pro-life i would never want a baby an unborn child to be killed just because the parent doesn't want to deal with having to raise it like Fuck that. I oppose that completely from a moral and ethical standpoint. Right. But when it comes down to, like, policy, right. you know, get the fuck out of my life. Right. No, and I'm, I'm super down with the with the killing yourself thing. I mean, I, I feel like there's so many times where um, uh, people need help when they need help. But, you know, even Bruce, when he was on, he talked about – did you listen to the Bruce, mm-hmm. Bruce episode? That was a great episode. So he talked a lot about, about end-of-life stuff, and, um, and I don't know why, not just – you know, not to be like, you know, super, you know, Alex Jones about it, but like, I don't know why we have to spend, not only are we spending a shit ton of tax money to keep somebody alive, but we're, we are, we are forcing them to stay alive sometimes a matter of months <laughs> when, yeah. they, and not just that, when they don't give a fuck because often they're not even with us consciously yeah. and not just that, but we're dragging the fam like the family is dra- is making that decision whether they're going to die or not. And it's like... It's not only are they, if they are conscious, it's the worst pieces of life. You're shitting and you can't eat and you can't, you can't stay awake for very long. You can't get up. You, you have no autonomy. You know, sometimes, I mean, if you, if you are making that decision, I want to stay alive because I want to spend this last whatever it is and you're making the decision rock and roll. But if you decide like, hey, you know what? I'm going to make the decision to pull out a little early because I don't want to be literally living here just shitting my pants for the next five months without any like that's all I'm doing is eating yeah. this some that someone else shovels into my face because I can't even do it on my I mean, own. You, dude, you're spot on, and and <clears throat> and you know the the point being made in that past pod, podcast, I agree with completely. In that you know end of life care is is a disaster, and it is not serving the purpose that it 
anybody wants. It's not benefiting anybody. It's certainly right. not benefiting the people that it's keeping alive, to your point. Right. I mean, if there's opportunities to save the life, that's a different situation. Sure. But if it's just like prolonging the suffering, essentially. Right. You know, in a lot of those cases, the sole purpose of the medical practitioner is just to ease pain. It's not mm -hmm. to save. It's not to, you know, it's just how can I make this person not feel pain and not suffer? And it's right. not even for that person's benefit. It's for their loved ones so that they don't have to actually deal with the loss. And, you know, I've, I've worked professionally in the healthcare industry for over 15 years. And, and end of life care is a big problem in terms of why our healthcare system is so costly and problematic, because that's where most spend takes place. Really? Oh, for sure. You know, I mean, health, you know, going back to, you know, why Medicare is such a disaster from a financial standpoint these days and why the health insurance trust fund, which pays for our Medicare hospital bills, okay. is about to be completely depleted. If you think about when when Medicare was created, which was in, I think, 1965, the average life expectancy was 70.1 years old for the American, hmm. which meant you received Medicare for five years. Mm -hmm. The average life expectancy for an American these days is over 78 years. So now the average American is living off of Medicare for 13 years. Hmm. There's also fewer current workers that are paying into the Medicare trust fund compared to the ratio of how many are utilizing Medicare. Right. So as that ratio shrinks and the number of people using it and to your point of that, you know, end of life care that can sometimes be anywhere from a couple weeks to months of just, you know, pumps and machines and tubes and absolute m misery that's literally vegetation. Sometimes sometimes agony or unconsciousness. Millions and millions <laughs> of dollars on a per person <clears throat> basis. It's just it's nonsensical and that's not even insurance. I mean, the the theory of insurance says that, you know, we pay uh, a small amount to cover an, a high cost, unlikely event, mm -hmm. right? Medicare is not insurance. We are prepaying for known health events because mm -hmm. when you're that old, you're going to need to receive yep. health care. Right. So Medicare is just us while we're working during those, call it 40 years of our professional or working lives, we pay for what we're going to receive when we turn 65. The right. problem is we're using way more than we pay in. And, right. you know, there are multiple ways that you can try to fix that, whether that's uh, postponing the eligibility from 65 to, you know, call it 68, 70, whatever you want to do. And then, of course, people, you know, fight back and push back against that. I mean, there's there's no politically safe way to achieve the... the and on the and on the other side of that, I wouldn't want somebody who's sixty eight to be working. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want somebody who's sixty to, to like I even when sure, I find like a sixty year old taxi driver, I'm like, Daddy, go home. You know what are sure, you doing? You know? do, I agree. But where do you balance the fact? <laughs> exactly. That retirement, no, I hear you. Retirement used to be five years on average. You lived to be right, seventy. So now right. we get to retire for thirteen years. Like. And if, if we're, we're going to live longer, we should work longer. And not just that, if we're choking these companies because of a lot of, honestly, not to be all Alex Jones about it, but a lot of these uh, uh, regulations choke companies harder, which makes them have less money, which makes them go, okay, where do we save money from? Take it from these people's fucking pensions and benefits, yep. right? Okay, so or we're going to- hire <laughs> less people or pay them less salary. Right. So yeah. once that happens, then okay, it, it, that that means that the benefits of working for that company for 20, 30 years get de get depleted. Well, so why, why does nobody in our generation too. work for a company for more than two or three years? Because pensions don't exist, because you can't earn those benefits anymore, because companies right. are too constrained to be able to, to, to reward their employees with those types of things, because the regulations that you talk about are in place these days. Right. So, you know, and and, and you know, we talk about, uh, the issue of, of kind of corporate America when you talk about big companies and, and one of the things that I always I get frustrated when I talk about kind of leftist viewpoints and socialist type viewpoints is oh I, w I think that the, the wealthy need to pay their fair share how right. often do you f hear that you know the right. wealthy should pay their right. fair share right I mean what is a fair share what right. what what at what point is a fair share actually achieved you know the one thing that really frustrates me is when people say these recent tax cuts to the wealthy, the tax cuts, right? The assumption that goes into calling it a tax cut is that they were being appropriately taxed before this cut, as you want to call it, took place, right? right. So instead of thinking of it as we are giving them something back, mm -hmm. instead, we are actually letting them keep more of what is theirs, right? right. There's a very different way of viewing a tax, quote unquote, cut. Totally. You know, because a cut only takes place based on what was previously a hike. And that's what every administration does when it goes from red to blue, red to blue. It goes right. hike, cut, hike, cut, right. hike, cut. Right. And 
you know, the reality is, and I even, I'll, I'll, I'll nerd here with some stats. Please. Um, so, you know, we talk about the fair share for the wealthy to pay, you know, and, and then the whole other issue that I could go on for, about for hours and hours is, well, what is, what, what are they paying into? What, what is the benefit of their taxation, right? And we can talk about being a libertarian, which means needing to reduce those social programs, needing to reduce, you know, those unnecessary spends, which as a conservative, believe it or not, I am also a libertarian, as I mentioned, and I will continue to mention because I, I think our government spending on the war machine is an absolute disaster in itself as well. Hmm. I, okay. you know, I, I think okay. I think there are absolutely ways and reasons to to support you know our our military and especially the veteran that are not being done. Right. But when you look at like the private contractors and the the, the vendors that are paid for, by our government to to supply and take care of our military, they're fucking so ridiculously overpaid for the services and 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 merchandise that they that they provide. But anyway, so. You know, what is the fair share, right? So here's some stats. So the top 1% of earners, so that's like really the, the, the wealthy, right? The top 1% of earners, they do earn 20.7% of American income. That's a lot. I'm not saying that that's fair or balanced in itself. Okay. All I'm saying is a fact. Right. The top 1% earn 20.7% of income, but they pay 39% of income taxes. So they're paying a disproportionate mm. amount of the income taxes. So those one percent pay almost forty percent of all income tax paid by the Americans. Interesting. Here's some more. The top one percent, that thirty nine percent is more than the bottom ninety percent pay combined. Say it again. The bottom ninety percent of taxpayers. So, so from, the bottom ninety percent zero pay... to ninetieth percentile pay twenty nine point four percent of all wow. of the American income taxes. Wow. The top 1% pay 39%. That's a fucking lot. The top 10% of earners pay 40... Excuse me. The top 10% earn 47% of our income. So to look at the 10% and above, the, the wealthiest 10% of America, they earn almost half of all American income. Probably not fair, quote unquote, if you quote want to go unquote. back to the moral issues of fairness. But when we're strictly talking taxation, those top 10% pay... 72 percent of all american income tax mm. you know there are hundreds of millions who pay zero income tax and are only benefiting they're only receiving right. and then we talk about well oh the wealthy need to pay their fair share at what point is fair fair you know right. and you know people talk about well you know who needs a billion dollars i mean if there's no incentive to be an entrepreneur and be you know a billionaire then nobody's going to be ingenuity driven and nobody's going to create the next apple and iphone and, and, and or on, the next you know and on a real Tesla. basis and on a real basis peter F fucking feliciano needs a million <laughs> needs a billion dollars right? well the right. other thing is too these little kids you work with them for a little bit and you start realizing they feel they are underpaid even if they're at the bottom ground level sure. working as a busser working as a host you know, it's like, I can't believe I'm not getting paid this much. And then taxes. None of these little kids running around who are all gung-ho, who are gung-ho for, right, who are gung-ho. Well, maybe percentage, there are like 30, 40 percent. The top 50 percent of earners pay 97.2 percent of our taxes. I'm not saying I disagree with it. <laughs> what I'm saying is out of their check of 300 fucking dollars, they are still paying 30 roughly percent, right? So, it, 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 you know, a good 70 percent, you know, 70 dollars or whatever. In, I'm not saying that's enough. What I'm saying is those people will still kvetch even though they're all gung-ho for social justice and gung-ho for socialism and wearing fucking Che Guevara t-shirts. They still will bitch about taxes being taken out of their show. Sure. And the French wanted socialist programs and all of a sudden their gas prices got hiked up and now look what the fuck's going on in Paris. You've got right. riots up the ass because all of a sudden these programs that they wanted, oh wait a second, we've got to pay for them. Right. Fucking AOC, I don't even know her full name, up in New York, the new congresswoman. Uh, oh, Ar 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 I keep calling her Arcadia. <laughs> it's not Arcadia. Miss Cortez. Who's yeah. not even, she's white, dude. Stop. Anyway, you know, yeah, I mean, if a, you watch the interviews with her and, and even even like left leaning media outlets, MSNBC, CNN are like, so who's going to pay for this health care? She's like, right. uh, I mean, that's right. literally her answer. Well, I'm not an economist, so that's not my my I don't right. need to figure that out. I just I just want to. Who's fucking her? That's my question. Who is fucking Arcadio? Nobody. Cortez? That's why she's, she's such a bitch. <laughs> 
It makes a difference. It really does. You girls know. Don't fucking lie. Just don't. This is sexist. Look within yourself. I want you to breathe, sweetie. And look within yourself. Are you a cunt more often when you're not getting proper fucked? Not having sex. Proper fucked. Oh, okay. So then let, let's get, let's be fucking real. Same thing goes with guys, by the way. Same thing goes with guys. Fuck yeah, it does. Dude, if I'm not getting fucked or, you know, satisfied one way or another, I am a raging asshole. Right. You know? Right. So, um, I don't know. Where the fuck were we? <laughs> it's just a mishmash. It's a mishmash. Did you like your chocolate milk? Uh, chocolate delicious. milk's good, isn't it? I don't it? know the last time I had chocolate milk was. Well, I'm a giver. Well, you know, I think uh, uh, Trump just, like, took away... Uh, um, Michelle Obama's like school lunch program that was making kids eat really healthy food. Oh yeah, again, a good thought in in an ideal world, not a good thought in practicality. Sure, no kids were eating it because it was fucking like garbage. I mean, they like literally, really? you, uh, dude. You can like Google, like it became uh, like a like a hot Twitter trend, like hashtag thanks Michelle. Because kids were taking pictures of how awful their school lunches were under this new program. It was so inedible that they were, like, sarcastically thanking Michelle Obama for force-feeding the garbage. And basically, more kids were getting hungry. And the issue is, like, public school kids need more and more right. food. But the food was so bad, nobody could eat it. I'm so now, now Donald Trump is evil for removing these regulations, which are allowing kids to eat more unhealthy food. But would you rather a kid eat unhealthy food or no food? I'm wondering what she's getting out of it. I guess Obama, the Obamas in general, they're getting to, they must be getting some some sort of financial kickback. Not just obviously the no, deliciousness the of the signal. power. They get the virtue signal. We right. wanted the health of our children and we're the ones that care about the good of our communities. And we're but the not ones just that, that want- Hillary can no longer be, and the liberals know it, Hillary can't be the big flag waver. She can't be, and we couldn't elect Obama for a third term, so now we're still going to prop him up as our savior, as our leader, but he's going to be like an, a leader who can't, you know, he like, was an abysmal do president. policy. And then, of course, people will say it's because, oh, he was black, so you just wanted to hate him. No, he was an abysmal president because, number one, he wasn't prepared or qualified at that point. He was okay. a hot name that was up and coming, right. and he has a lot of charisma. He's an incredible right. public speaker, and I right. respect the hell out of him for it. Sure. He can command a room, he can command an audience, and he can command right. respect. That's a great thing. Sure. But he also had zero backbone in terms of actually driving and pushing policy through. Right. When he took over in his first term, he had the House and the Senate. He lost them both overwhelmingly. We talked about this blue wave that just happened in these yeah, midterm it was elections. It was small. It was, that was a fucking, you know, like a, Comparatively, a pebble in the, was, in, the, yeah. in, the, in, the, in the river. I mean, like, right. when you look at the, the shift that happened in the first term, in most first terms, but especially in Obama's first term, right. that's a direct implication of the way that he was leading the government. And right. uh, it just shows, you know, how inept he was in terms of, like, actually driving policy and change. Which is certainly not his job as 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 commander in chief. He has other roles and responsibilities, and it's Congress's job to pass laws and his job to just agree and sign. But at the same time, you also have to actually kind of be a leader in the sense of, especially when both House and Senate are on my side, quote unquote. You know, I can't even get shit done, and all of a sudden the entire American public shifts completely, like 180 on me, and just votes in an entirely red wave. You know, that is telling you something. And then, you know, it only got worse each term. More and more red seats. And Even you know. even in 2011, 2010, when Patrice came out with his, uh, when Patrice O'Neill came out with this uh, great special called uh, Elephant in the Room. Please watch it, everybody. Elephant in the Room. It's And watch the un, the unedited hour and, four, hour and 20 minute version is on YouTube. Just go. Um, and he talks about how uh, he was like, I'll give you white guys credit. You tried. You gave it a try. You know, but he was disappointed with Obama. I was, and he was too. A, bl- a big black guy had, in 2010. I had hopes for was him. Dis- was disappointed in, in, in Obama. I was excited about the Obama presidency. I thought he was a young, fresh politician with novel ideas that was actually going to, quote unquote, change things, right? Right. And it was more of the same. It was more just political talking out of one side of your mouth and doing other things. He right. was completely 
Uh, he was wimpy with Iran. Besides oh, I mean, just wimpy with fucking... was just pathetic. It with was the Congress. Just like, uh, you know, right. Oh, you, we'll, we'll do whatever you want, and we'll give you right. billions of dollars, and we'll just kind of be right. the nice guy. But you nice promise no, 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 yeah. no nuclear stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. Yes, we promise. <laughs> and then, of course, yeah, right? And then, you know, his, his, big, uh, his big win was, was the ACA, uh, otherwise and more probably known as Obamacare, right? The Affordable Care Act. And, again, as a healthcare professional who studies and knows this stuff inside and out, like... There was need for change, and it was, you know, attempt at something, and I give him credit for that because something needed to change. Hmm. I will give him credit for trying to make something change. However, again, solution to a problem that was actually just going to make it worse. Okay. You know, in wh- in you know, what I, way? I, I could call out, like, the whole, you know, the, the, the broken record that is out there of, you know, oh, you can keep your doctor and keep your plan if you like it. You can keep it, you know. And, right. of course, he lied on that, and he knew right, that right, wasn't right. going to happen. Right. That's not even my issue with it. I mean, the issue with it is, number one, going back to, like, what insurance actually is. Like, insurance, by definition, is paying a small amount to cover an unlikely high-cost event. Right. And you pool all that money together to cover those rare exceptions that happen. Right. When you remove the issue of pre-existing conditions, insurance no longer becomes insurance. Now, I'm not saying that people with pre-existing conditions shouldn't receive health care. Do not get me wrong and do not misinterpret me. They absolutely need to be able to receive the care they need, and they always have been able to, by the way. If you show up at a hospital, mm-hmm. hospitals, by law, cannot turn a person away for right. inability to pay. I remember I had a $1,300 bill once because I had to go to the hospital. I think it was like 1300 and I slowly paid it off, I think. Yeah. I don't know what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I, may owe, get I may owe a strange... You can also get them forgiven and, and, and uh, you know, yeah. I mean, look... There are issues in our healthcare system. It is fucking broken, and that's why I went into this industry to try to help fix it. I'm just one person with with some ideas and probably some bad ones. Dangly sack, very (laughs) dangly sack. But all right, here here's here's my like one big kind of. I will tell you, it is seven fifty nine. All right, so here's here's my one big point on healthcare and why the ACA was such a failure. Number one, it didn't address the actual problem. Okay, you know. So what is, what is the problem we're trying to fix? The problem we're trying to fix is we want everybody to have access to health care. There are 30-some-odd right. million people without insurance before the ACA, and we need to make sure that they have coverage. Right. Okay? So the solution was everybody must get insurance. Or get penalized. Or pay a tax, quote-unquote, um, which you know is a problem in and of itself. So number one, you're forcing healthy people who don't want insurance because they've weighed the risks themselves. Again, as a libertarian, don't tell me what I should and shouldn't buy. If I don't want to buy insurance and I want to take the risk upon myself, that's mm-hmm. up to me. Number two, you're removing what insurance is supposed to be, which is insurance, and making it prepaid health care. But instead of being prepaid health care like Medicare, where I'm paying in during the course of my career so that I can weep the benefits when I'm in retirement, now we're asking the healthy young people to pay for the already sick people. That's not – that's socialism. Right. And so, okay, well – you know, social good says that you should care for your fellow man. I, I hear you all that. Mm-hmm. But nobody ever pointed the finger at the doctor. Nobody ever once said, why is healthcare so expensive and hard to attain in the United States of America? Mm. Research that has existed for over 40 years, over four decades, says that a third of every dollar spent in the American healthcare system is completely unnecessary. It is things that should not happen, that do not make you healthier, that do not make you better. And it could be anything from I have a cold and a virus and I go into my doctor and as an uninformed patient, I say, please give me a pack because I feel like shit. And the doctor says, if it'll make you happy, here's a prescription. Doesn't harm me. Doesn't make me sicker. But they just gave me an antibiotic and I have a virus. It does me no good. That's one minimal example. There are other far more intense examples. Spinal fusions for back pain. Chest stents. Heart stents for chest pain. You know, these are sixty, seventy thousand dollars surgeries that literally do no good. They don't necessarily harm, but they do no good. So that's 30 cents of every dollar spent in American mm. healthcare. We spend over a trillion dollars a year on nothing. We are burning it into just smoke. That trillion dollars, sometimes estimated at 900 billion, if you took that 900 billion dollars that is being paid out to doctors and hospitals for absolutely right. unnecessary shit, and you said, wait a second, we could pull that out of the healthcare system and actually keep that and actually pay for guess what there are 30 million people who don't have health insurance there's 900 billion dollars to give each of them thirty thousand dollars a year for the rest of their life now that's like a crazy ideal liberal mindset sure, of, sure, you sure, know, sure. but you know, I, I have a question i have a question is it is it malice 
no. on the part? Is no. it greed There's on the diff- part of the doctors who are? No, it's it's economic incentives. We we have what's called a fee for service system, right? So when you go to the hospital, you go to the doctor. The doctor is reimbursed for what they do, meaning. It's like going to the car mechanic, right? They have like a little book that says, right. if I need to replace this, it's going to cost me two hours mm-hmm. of labor and three $300 of parts, and that's mm-hmm. what I'm going to bill you. Right. But for each check mark I put down, I get paid more and more and more. Right. It has nothing to do with whether your car got fixed or not, right? You right. just paid for the actual labor and the parts and so right. forth. Right. Right. When you go to the hospital, they don't get paid because you got better. They got paid for how much did they do to you. So for every test they run, for every lab they run, for every procedure they do, they get more money. So if you go in there with a, a broken right arm and the doctor says, well, we should x-ray your right arm and your left arm just to compare the two, and they do that all the time, it's absolutely not beneficial, but they realize, oh, I've got them in here. I can do two procedures and get paid for both, even though really all I want to focus on is the right arm. So when the incentive is to do more, not to make better, you're just completely flipping the incentive so that those doctors who are doing so much crap that shouldn't be done are getting all the money and driving the nice car and living in the mansion whereas that actually good doctor who's actually being conservative and thinking wait a second what actually does this patient need what would make them better and actually limiting the priv- the services they provide to just those things that's the doctor who should be getting paid better because they're actually doing better at managing the population and they get paid the least that's a completely ass you know ass up incentive model that that has just ruined our healthcare system Hmm. so anyway rant over but the point is nobody ever once said wait a second where is the root of this problem where is the why is american healthcare three times more expensive than other countries but we live shorter lives you know why do we pay so much more for worse healthcare uh instead it was no forget that there's a problem with actually like the way that healthcare is delivered let's just throw a bunch of money at the people that are sick and just throw them into this already defunct, fucked up, you know, uh, environment, and just let them, you know, waddle around in in mediocrity, which is the American healthcare system. Uh, can I? Can, I mean, it's eight oh four. Can I? Can I just poke a little bit more? Yeah. Is there a system that works better, and where is it? Um, so there are systems even here in America that work better. Okay. Ka- Kaiser Permanente is one of them. Um, okay. Basically, models that pay for essentially what's called like the the medical or the the industry term for it is capitation which is essentially instead of paying you for like per event or per per procedure or per test or whatever Mm -hmm. we will cover you on an annual basis per life right so you as a hospital you are responsible for these fifty thousand people Mm -hmm. and we as the insurance industries who cover those 50,000 people, let's say one insurance company has 10,000, another has 30,000, the government has 10,000, we will each pay you $10,000 per life. And you are responsible to take care of them and make them healthy. And whether they need $20,000 worth of care or $0 worth of care, you get $10,000 from us as the insurance company. And that makes insurance back into insurance so that the healthy people aren't you know, overpaying for the sick, the sick are getting the care that they need, and the hospital is incentivized to take care of them efficiently because the more they do, the more it costs them, and therefore they have no reason to do the extra test and the extra lab because it's just burning through their own resources and overhead, and mm-hmm. instead they need to be more conscious of how much do I need to do to make this patient well. So and if not- I don't treat them well, they're going to come back and need additional services, so right. I need to do a good job and take care of them th- when they do come in. So it's not like the type of thing where I remember one time I was listening to Opie and Anthony, and he talked about uh, some some government or some uh, army guy work, uh, talked about how at the end of the fiscal year, his, his officer above him would tell him to go out into the ocean and dump all of the oil out into the ocean so that it could be a part of next year's budget so that they don't get screwed on the budget on the oil budget for next year because they didn't use it so it's not like that it's not like a a zero sum type of no you get to you get to reap the benefits of being more efficient so if you're getting ten thousand dollars per life and you're actually able to manage your population at eight thousand dollars per life on average you get to hold on to that two thousand dollars extra per life and you get to Mm. keep that profit Right. So there's an incentive to actually be more efficient and more you know, appropriate with the way that you provide care. You know, on the flip side, if you're doing those extra services, you know, uh, and, and actuaries are really good at this. The people that actually price and decide what's the risk of our population and how much is it going to cost us? And therefore, how much do we have to charge in premiums in order to cover the cost of all of our of all of our members? That's what mm-hmm. actuaries do. Actuaries actually have the ability to 
effectively calculate, if they're good at what they do, to effectively calculate how much is it going to cost us to manage these 50,000 people, as, as an example, just for simple numbers. Um, you know, the one solution to that is like universal health care. I, 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 I agree that there are efficiencies that can be created through universal health care, but I also do not ever think that the government should be involved in such an enterprise. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if universal health care were to come in and some sort of monopoly were to take place where like insurance companies would, you know, manage all lives across the country, which is not ideal, but it, it's, right. it's, it's a situation that could come up. The government should not be the one managing that because if you want to go back to your DMV analogy, that's what right. we're dealing with. Or what if it, what if it was statewide? So uh, you know how Caltrain, Caltrain as an example, is a company, but there's only one fucking track, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a different company Utilities. every couple of years that takes over, and now and now this utility is now managed by X Y Z, sure. right? I mean, so what if it was something like that, where California, as an example, was it was universal, but it was one big giant bucket managed by a company for a, for a couple of years. You get a couple of years to manage this bucket, and then a couple of years later, someone else, it, you know, you take a vote maybe within your all the people who you cover in California, and you can say if it's going well or it's going. But you no, know what I mean? Even better, yeah, you do it by state or by city or county or whatever you want to do it. But it's also you know the 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 lowest bid wins, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you allow companies to compete for the bid, but they come in and say, we'll cover this entire county at $5,000 per life. No, we'll do it for $4,500 per life, right? And then they take on the risk of whatever bid they create. And that's on their actuaries to do the math properly. So, you know, then everybody, you know, through paycheck deductions, just as we do today, and employers who pay into it, but also, you know, your, your, your taxes and everything, you know, combined to create that pool of money that matches whatever that lowest bid was for your geography. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think localized is the best way to do it because you're only going to know your own population. You know, people in California aren't going to be able to effectively decide what the appropriate rates are for the populations in Ohio, you know? So, right. Um, the more, Probably more smokers in New York than there are in, you know, <laughs> right? in Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. No, health demographics are different. Uh, you know, geography is destiny in healthcare. And if you don't know your own population, you're fucked because you're going to set rates wrong. You're not going to know what the, you know, the likelihood of obesity and diabetes and heart disease and all those things are. And the more you know that stuff about your population, the more appropriately you set those rates. And right now, the problem is, especially with this individual mandate, and the allowance of the sick population to be pulled in with the healthy population, like I said, it's just the healthy population is 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 paying for the care that is undoubtedly going to be going towards the sick. It's a form of charity, but it's forced charity. That's not the way charity is meant to work. Right. It's supposed to be cultured. It's supposed to yeah. be given to us and ta taught to us through the individuals. Well, charity used to exist in America. Which 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 would be fixed? Which would be helped if there were actual fucking men? If men were genuine, with big droopy balls, with big, well, I don't know about that. Um, so it's eight ten. You want to cut it? Yeah, brother. All right. This has been Dude, fun, man. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah, this has been a really, especially the last fifteen minutes. I'm like, son of a bitch, because I have a lot more questions and shit. But um, well, I'll be back. Uh, I'll be back probably every six weeks or so, and we should set up another session, and you can come up with more questions and right. pick my brain. You know, pick your again, balls. I will, I will, Talk about I will the texture. reiterate to your audience that I, I don't even come close to believing I have all the answers, but I do know that a lot of the answers that our government is trying to give us today are fucking wrong. Interesting. I agree. Ladies and gentlemen, um, do you have anything to plug? No, I guess not, right? No. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be, I, Peter Edgar Feliciano, uh, I am going to be playing music at uh, Grape in the Fog in Pacifica, uh, Friday, December 21st, between 6.30 and 9.30. Uh, I'm going to be playing at Duvin Wine Bar in, San, er, in Oakland, I'm sorry, uh, Saturday the 22nd. Um, 8.30 to 11, and I'll be playing down in the South Bay at Testarossa uh, on January 19th uh, between, what the fuck time is it? 3 to uh, three to 5.30. Um, find me on uh, Instagram at Peter underscore Feliciano. Uh, support all my dumb, weird, creepy Instagram videos uh, and all my musical endeavors and podcast geo endeavors by going to patreon.com slash conservatish. Um, and thank you so much again for, for joining me. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me. This has been fun. Good. I've been, I've been wanting to get on here, even though you said people like me didn't deserve a platform. <laughs> I meant more droopy balls, people. <laughs> All right. We'll be back, All right, boys. Peace out. Bye.